started here in a couple of minutes, but in the meantime, let's take a quick poll while everyone logs in. Will this be your first time participating in Clean Air Day? We're just taking a quick poll. If you've just joined the webinar, if you could just answer the poll questions and we'll get started here pretty shortly. Okay, um, good morning again, everyone. Thank you for deciding to spend a little part of your day with us today uh, talking about Clean Air Day. Again, my name is Deborah Jones. I'm an account executive at Sandag's iCommute Employer Program. Um, so uh, we asked you just quickly in a poll if this was your first time participating in Clean Air Day and 90% of you said yes. So um, welcome to the challenge and uh, we're glad that um, you're feeling inspired to, to uh, clean up the air. Um, before we get started, I've got a couple of housekeeping uh, notes. Um, first of all, there's a box on the right hand side of your screen for questions. So feel free to type in uh, your questions there. Um, and to save time, we're gonna answer the questions at the end of the presentation. And then second, today's webinar is being recorded and it will be shared on our website in case you would like to watch it again or perhaps share it with uh, people in your organization or your friends. Um, so next slide. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Next slide past that. I wanted to share our agenda for today. So on our agenda for today, uh, I'm going to just give a quick brief overview of Sandag and the iCommute program. Um, then we'll have Brian Sheridan, who is the development director at the Coalition for Clean Air, um, who's going to tell us about Clean Air Day and the ways that you can get involved. Um, after that, we'll have Nick's Cor Nick Cormer from the Air Pollution Control District to share information on vehicle emissions and particularly San Diego's air quality, um, followed by Rob Shook from uh, the Metropolitan Transit System, or MTS. He's going to join us to talk about their zero emission bus program, followed by North County Transit District, or NCTV, uh, to, to tell us about their um, how they're implementing their zero, zero emission bus technology. And then finally, we'll go over the uh, Clean Air Day corporate challenge um, and details about our social media contest. And I'll say a few words about Sandag's vision for the region. And we'll end with a Q&A session at the end. Next slide. So now I'd like to share a little bit about the Sandag iCommute program, which um, probably quite a few of you already know about, um, but just uh, briefly, Sandag or the San Diego Association of Governments is the region's long-term, uh, long-range planning agency. So we're made up of representatives from all uh, 18 cities um, and jurisdictions in the county. And Sandag is responsible for creating a long-term, a long-range uh, vision for the
taxis into account and still maintains our quality of life. iCommute is the transportation demand management program at Sandag, um, also known as a TDM. Um, iCommute encourages the use of alternative transportation modes and helps reduce traffic congestion and um, as a byproduct, reduces greenhouse gas emissions. So we assist commuters with transit solutions. We also have a subsidized van pool program. We have information about teleworking. We do, we uh, provide support for a regional bicycle program. And one of our signature programs is our guaranteed ride home program among others. We also provide assistance to local businesses with our employer program by helping them develop and implement customized employee commuting programs that help lower costs and increase productivity and help the environment. So um, I'd like to um, introduce Brian. Next slide. Um, so um, Brian Sheridan is the development director at the Coalition for Clean Air. And Brian is here to tell us more about ways that you can get involved with Clean Air Day, which is coming up next week on October 7th. Thank you, Brian. We're always we're all looking forward to um, hearing about your ideas. <laughs> well, I am uh, I'm thrilled to to be here. Hopefully, everybody can see me. Um, you know, California Clean Air Day is going into its third year, and it's been an amazing journey uh, to give people the opportunity to really uh, take back control over air pollution. And so, what you see here is just one of our 90 events that took place last year, where you had um, a group of volunteers that were doing a tree planting in a local park, uh, along with volunteers from the Los Angeles Kings. And, um, you know, these kind of events were taking place all over the place, including in San Diego. Now, obviously, you know, the event side of Clean Air Day is going to look a little different this year. Next slide, please. But there's a really good reason that we do California Clean Air Day. You know, we have some of the most polluted uh, cities in, in right here in California. And, you know, that includes San Diego. So San Diego, unfortunately, is the sixth worst uh, air quality in the country, not just California, but in the country. And um, so, you know, we want to give people the opportunity to do something about it because there's some very real consequences. Uh, you know, last year or annually, we have 1 million California students miss school thanks to poor air quality. And Californians are four times as likely to experience serious air pollution related health problems. Uh, next slide, please. And so we're going into our third California Clean Air Day and we're, we're inviting everybody to take part. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, last year, next slide, please. We uh, celebrated, we had lots of great activities happening from, you know, uh, technological unveilings to ribbon cuttings for bike paths to the aforementioned tree plantings to people taking transit. You know, Clean Air Day was and is about everyone doing their part for clean air. Next slide, please. But it all starts when you go to the uh, webpage at cleanairday.org uh, about taking action. And so you might be the most sustainable person in the world and you might be you know, just somebody who's trying to dip your toe. Really, we think that if you go to cleanairday.org, there's something for you. And we encourage you when you go to cleanairday.org to choose from at least one of each of the three broad categories if you can. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. But, you know, Clean Air Day is really made possible thanks to our organizational partners. And you know, right now we've got over 400. We hope to have 500 by next Wednesday. So there's still time to, if you've got a business, there's still time to sign up. Um, but most of our organizational partners are engaging uh, their employees or their um, students or their customers in uh, this day of collective action. And so uh, the two of those things really interact together uh, to help us, you know, 
have this big celebration. Next slide, please. You know, by doing this, we get to a lot of people. You know, we had 650,000 people take action last year. Uh, and of course, everything these days happens on social media. The official hashtag is Clean Air Day CA, uh, not to be confused with Clean Air Day, which happens in the United Kingdom. Uh, but, you know, our elected officials took part, Caltrans put up signage. It's a, it was a great celebration last year. Uh, next slide, please. And that has some real impact. You know, 1.25 million people uh, or 1.25 million actions were taken uh, to clear the air in San Diego. Uh, uh, we had 100,000 additional transit riders, which is awesome. I mentioned 90 events. And we, you know, as I mentioned, we're well ahead of our organizational participation this year. Next slide, please. And so we added something kind of fun in 2020, uh, which is a kids pledge. And I'll get into that in a second, um, but it's an opportunity really for all of you to commit yourselves to taking action next Wednesday uh, or by next Wednesday and you know, invite your family in to do it with you. Uh, what we found was that many of the uh, items that uh, we had on the individual pledge were not age appropriate. So we added that and we think we've got some really great stuff lined up. Uh, next slide, please. So the first category that we chose from was, uh, and this is particularly important in this time of such unprecedented, unprecedented poor air quality, uh, where we need to understand how to protect our health. And so these are things that we think that make a big difference if regularly uh, changed, such as cleaning your home air filter, or you know, the second one on our list is change your car cabin air filter, which is not to be confused with your engine air filter. Um, that is specifically designed to protect yourself from particulate ma uh, matter, you know, these tiny little particles that enter your lungs from entering the vehicle. And so, you know, you can see some of the other suggestions, you know, choose one or everything if you're just really gung ho, but, but do something. Uh, and there is a story behind each of these actions that I'm happy to get into. Uh, next slide, please. But of course, you know, our tree canopy plays a big role in clean air in California. And, you know, unfortunately, again, due to the wildfires, we're having a lot of tree canopy loss. And so we're challenging people to go out, you know, maybe leading up to Clean Air Day uh, to, to really do something about that, help us improve our urban tree canopy. But even if you can't plant a tree, you know, you can maybe plant a, a, a garden or get involved in a community garden. It's a really good opportunity to challenge yourself if you have not done that. Or at a minimum, <clears throat> you know, some studies have shown that indoor plants actually help to improve uh, your uh, indoor air pollution. So these are just a couple of uh, suggestions. Next slide, please. But of course, we wouldn't be on this webinar if we didn't all recognize the, the role that vehicle emissions have in creating poor air quality. And so, you know, obviously we brought telecommuting over from last year. Uh, we wanted to keep it on there because we think there's a lot of ways that you can think about telecommuting that even if you're sort of required to do so, but more importantly, have you thought about, you know, your interstitial trips? You know, are you, have you tried to walk or bike to the store instead of drive and back? Have you, you know, have you tried to take public transit yet? Um, you know, uh, you know, again, you can think about carpooling and vampooling, you know, differently. Have you thought about, you know, if you are uh, going to soccer practice or something? Is everybody taking different cars? Have you thought about how you could carpool there? So again, you know, and the last thing I'll just say is for those of you that are really passionate that, that this is your, this could be your final push into getting into that electric vehicle. They are amazing. Never go to a gas station again. They're really amazing cars and I encourage everybody to check them out. Um, next slide, please. And so, as I mentioned, you know, we wanted to add a kid friendly activities. So again, at cleanairday.org, uh, there's an opportunity for kids to, you know, kind of challenge themselves to do certain things that we think make a difference. 
Um, and then, you know, hopefully what happens is if your kids um, or if, you know, your nephews or nieces or whoever you might work with, you know, they take the pledge, you take the pledge, you know, um, those are different pledges, but that starts a conversation that I think is really important uh, with in this space. It's a great STEM opportunity. So if you're at home with your kids and you're really thinking about how do I engage them, um, this is a great way to do that. And, you know, again, social media, uh, cleanairday.org is the website. The hashtag is cleanairdayca. And you can follow the conversation at cleanairday and uh, share with us what you're doing. We love to hear. Um, and of course, in all of these cases, be it the business pledge, the individual pledge, or the kids pledge, we recognize that there are all kinds of ways to get involved. So all of them have tell us what else you're doing. Um, if you, next, next pledge, uh, next slide. So I, of course I would be remiss if I did not thank those for making it possible. Um, along with, I mentioned, you know, the fo good folks from Sandag uh, really appreciate their active involvement in uh, California Clean Air Day and uh, really look for, looking forward to engaging with all of you. Um, you can go to our website to see a full list of you know, schools and nonprofits and corporate partners, all 400 are listed on there and uh, happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Brian, that was great. Um, we know we're, we're all looking forward to putting some of those good ideas to use on Clean Air Day, so thank you. Um, we, have a, we have another poll um, and uh, our group is gonna put that poll up for you before we hear from Nick. Okay, so here's the next poll. How are you pledged to reduce vehicle emissions on October 7th? And here are your choices. Okay, a couple seconds to take that poll. Um, and then we'll show you the results. Okay, let's see those results. All right, here we go. Well, since most people are still working from home, not surprised by the first one there. So 84% are going to telework and attend meetings remotely, uh, followed by bike, walk or bike to a store or transit stop. Fantastic. Um, take transit um, uh, is the last answer. And then bring your lunch or work uh, or walk to lunch um, is 29%. So thank you so much for taking that poll. That was awesome. All right. So now we have um, uh, Nick Cormer, and he is joining us from the Air Pollution Control District. So welcome, Nick. We're going to hand it over to you. Great. Thank you, Deborah. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, hopefully, everyone can hear me. Um, uh, thank you to Sandag and the entire iCommute team as well for allowing me to uh, be here today on the panel. Um, and um, I'm happy to discuss vehicle emissions today and their impact on air quality in the San Diego region. So with that, we'll go ahead and get jump right in. Next slide. So the events that have unfolded in recent weeks with the wildfires and smoke throughout the state really have put into perspective the impact that poor air quality can have on us. Uh, poor air quality is not just caused by fires though. It's sometimes it's not something that you can see visually. Uh, in some cases, the worst air quality is completely invisible and it can have severe consequences on the respiratory health of our at-risk populations such as the elderly and children. Uh, air quality is really dependent on two factors, which includes the emissions that are going into the air, um, as well as the meteorology and the chemistry that is already in the air. Uh, emissions typically come from the combustion of fossil fuels when running vehicles or other equipment, uh, but they're also predominant in many of our household products that we use on a daily basis. Uh, for example, the pollutant ozone forms in the presence of sunlight and heat. Um, so when the weather is not conducive to that happening, uh, let's say on a cold day, um, ozone is, is not particularly prevalent and doesn't form as much. However, on very hot days, it could form um, a lot. Um, and so both emissions and meteorology and chemistry of the air, um, they're always changing. Um, it's difficult to predict sometimes when we might see days with bad air 
quality, but we, we do the best we can um, here at APCD. Next slide, please. A good example of this is, is right here in San Diego County. Uh, with its sunny climate, topographic features, and proximity to the Pacific Ocean, San Diego is particularly well suited for ozone pollution formation and buildup. Uh, air pollution is emitted in the coastal areas of our county, and then it blows eastward to our inland valleys. And then on its way, it has time to react with the sunlight to form ozone. Uh, the ozone then gets trapped against our local mountain ranges which is typically why we see elevated levels of ozone in the inland and mountain areas of San Diego County, uh, like in areas like Alpine. Uh, next slide, please. So criteria pollutants such as ozone form when elevated levels of volatile organic compounds or VOC for short, and oxides of nitrogen or NOx are, are emitted into the air. VOC and NOx come from a variety of sources in San Diego County, but as you can see on the pie chart on the left side of the screen, uh, almost two thirds of it comes from mobile sources. 24% of that comes from specifically from on-road transportation sources. Uh, similarly, on-road transportation emits almost half the greenhouse gases in San Diego County, um, shown on the pie chart on the right side of the screen. So as a result, driving less not only results in reduced greenhouse gases, but it also results in less ozone forming emissions. Next slide, please. So the previous charts assess the entire inventory of emissions on a macro scale for the region, uh, but they don't really show the impact of choices made on a micro scale um, for the average person. So the comparisons on this slide attempt to do that. Uh, for example, just, switch, just uh, switching from a gasoline to a zero emission car uh, can reduce as much as four tons of carbon dioxide every year on average. Similarly, participating in a band pool can reduce NOx and CO2 emissions, even if the van is still powered by gasoline. Uh, if those same four people that are in that van pool instead decided to walk or bike or skateboard or even telecommute that a lot of people are doing today, they can virtually eliminate their vehicular commute emissions. Um, the same can be said with, with people that switch to uh, using low or zero emission transit options. And as you'll hear in a few slides uh, today, transit is increasingly becoming more clean than it ever has. Um, so as people, more people adopt these strategies, you can really start to see the potential emission reductions start to add up. Next slide, please. So there are uh, more improvements that are on the way, uh, more improvements that are on the way to help the region meet further state and national air quality goals. Uh, one of these efforts that's a big one is the adoption of CARB's innovative clean transit regulation that they did this year. Uh, this regulation is going to require that transit buses be zero emission by 2040 uh, with new zero emission bus purchases starting as soon as 2029. Uh, CARB is also working on the next phase of its advanced clean cars regulation. Uh, if that's adopted by CARB in 2021, um, it's going to further reduce criteria pollutant and GHG emission reductions from passenger vehicles. Uh, and that's going to complement the governor's recent executive order goal uh, that just came out uh, a week or two ago to have new vehicles sold in 2035 that are only zero emission. Uh, finally, the district's recently completed ozone attainment plan um, is also going to ensure that criteria pollutant emission reductions uh, from on-road transportation continue to occur. And uh, it, it's going to require that uh, a decline of by as much as 40% by 2032 compared to today's levels. Next slide, please. So one scenario we've already seen happening uh, is the impact of COVID-19 and, and what it's doing to our transportation and our roadways uh, in terms of traffic. So while the full extent of these changes isn't really fully known yet, there's a lot of agencies working on it, um, but the, there was a preliminary analysis done uh, by South Coast Air Quality Management District in the Los Angeles area. Uh, and it, they did find that emissions and traffic did both go down during the first few months of the pandemic between April and June time period. Um, I think that was pretty clear based on what everybody saw um, with their own eyes. But however, heavy duty truck traffic, while it took a small dip at first, um, has since gone back to pre-pandemic levels. And uh, it's, they think it's caused be because people are just continuing to buy things and there's a lot of deliveries happening now. Um, so uh, the bad thing is unfortunately, heavy duty trucks make up the significant portion of emissions uh, in our Southern California region. So as a result, the region really still has been experiences, uh, experiencing bad ozone days at times, 
um, which is kind of indicating that meteorology and chemistry may be playing a bigger role in the air quality equation. Um, that would that I discussed on the uh, on the first slide of this presentation. Next slide, please. So in the meantime, while we're figuring that uh, out, uh, so it's important for the public to learn uh, about ways that they can be a part of the solution to reduce air pollution. Um, and there's just simple things that can be done in everybody's uh, daily life. Um, it starts with things that you can do on the road um, during your commute. So I'm not going to go over these uh, in depth. Uh, Brian's presentation laid these out very well just before me. Um, so, but uh, feel free to refer to these um, to these slides if the presentation gets sent out later on. Next slide, please. Uh, similar, like I said, similar improvements can also be made at, at the workplace. Um, again, Brian's Brian's presentation laid out some of these ideas. Um, so we'll go ahead to the next slide. And finally, here are just some ideas that you can do around the house. Uh, something as simple as using a zero emission garden equipment can really help significantly. Uh, using your gas powered lawnmower for one hour um, emits the same emissions as a 2017 Toyota Camry um, if that car is driving from LA to Las Vegas. Uh, so it's not really something to be overlooked. Um, just just the, ink, the use of lawnmowers and leaf blowers is pretty impactful just, just by themselves. So little things um, do don't they don't really show an impact on an individual basis, um, at least from regional perspective from what APCD looks at it. But um, if a lot of people start doing this stuff in the aggregate, it can really have meaningful results in the long run. Next slide. So that is all I have today. Again, my name is Nick Cormier. Uh, my contact information is on the slide. Uh, you can learn about ways to reduce air pollution um, on our APCD website. And you'll also be able to find some fact sheets um, about some of the things I talked about today uh, on ozone, which is our primary problem here in, in San Diego County. Um, and and you, it goes into depth about more ways uh, that you can reduce air pollution and some other ideas that um, I didn't cover in depth today. But with that, I'll go ahead and um, thank you for everyone's time. And I, I'll turn it over back to uh, Deborah. and I'll happy to answer questions later on. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Nick. That was so interesting. I, I'm going to go check out those resources because it's just fascinating, especially when we had all that bad uh, smoke uh, air quality recently. Um, so now I'd like to introduce Rob Shoup from MTS. Um, he's here to tell us about the zero emission bus program. Hey, Rob, uh, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Deborah. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, this is another exciting day for, for Clean Air Day. I'm gonna go off script a little bit because I've been, um, there's some things I wanna to react to from the other presentations. Um, I was happy to see that 16% uh, are planning to ride transit. And if I can get those numbers up by convincing you that uh, MPS has taken a lot of efforts to keep our system clean. Um, we have upped our, our fumigation and our, um, our, our cleaning of vehicles and stations during the midday. Um, face masks are required if you come back on board. So um, this is uh, it's a great opportunity to uh, reduce your, your, your personal um, contributions to, to air quality or to increase your, your um, reduction of, of, of pollutants. So transit's a good way to go. Um, it's a pleasure too to be back on Clean Air Day. You know, Brian did mention for the past couple of years that we were um, a participant and together with a partnership with North County Transit District, um, we did get like 125,000 people additional rides on Clean Air Day last, last year. So that was a huge, huge impact. Um, and, and it was really working up, up until COVID, um, all of our efforts to increase transit ridership were working. Our ridership um, was up year over year. And that was the first year um, that uh, ridership had gone up over the past three years. There was like a three year uh, ridership decline. And that was across the country. Um, fewer people were riding transit, but we did, uh, we did a lot of efforts to, to increase ridership and that, and that was working. Um, and free ride day and clean air day had a lot to do with that. Um, so we can go to the next slide, please. Um, you know, it, MTS has always been kind of a leader in, in reductions of, of uh, 
pollutants. Um, in the 90s, we were one of the first agencies in California to convert to all compressed natural gas vehicles. In fact, um, we are retiring the last 20 uh, diesel vehicles this year. So we now have um, 800, 800 um, mass transit vehicles that are operating on uh, either CNG or our trolley vehicles, which are operating on electricity already. Um, we pioneered the use of near zero emission engines, and those are used uh, throughout the country now. Um, our CNG buses are really um, um, one of the lowest well-to-wheel um, uh, fuel sources and engines um, in operation. Um, we also buy renewable biogas, enough to, uh, to fuel our entire fleet. Um, biogas is kind of like uh, buying electricity from a different provider than SDG&E. This biogas is actually produced up in Washington, but it has the same qualities uh, as, as CNG. They push it into the pipeline, so we get credit for buying um, that renewable biogas. Um, as I mentioned, at the end of this year, we will have no diesel vehicles at all in our, in our fleet. Our trolley is all electric. And I'm also proud to, know, to, to tell you that our trolleys are uh, manufactured in Sacramento by Siemens. And their manufacturing plant is um, about 90% of its power requirements come from solar. So, you know, not only are the, the, the trolleys produced with, without um, um, uh, producing a lot of uh, um, pollution, but the vehicles themselves are, are, are not emitting any, any either, excuse me. Um, so yeah, we have one of the cleanest fleets in the United States. Next slide, please. So um, that's not stopping us from getting even cleaner. Um, it, you know, we, we do have that mandate by the state to convert our entire fleet to uh, um, zero emission buses by 2040. We are well on our way to doing that. Um, we already have six battery electric buses in operation. We're gonna get two more by the end of this year. And then we're gonna get 12 uh, 60 foot battery electric buses um, uh, in 2022. Um, our board last month approved our, our transition plan. So we're submitting that to CARB um, well ahead of the, the deadline. So we're, we're one of the first agencies in California to, to get that plan approved by its board of directors. And as you can see from the people in, in this um, picture, this is um, hugely, it, it's, it's, it's a coalition of people that are getting together to make this happen. I mean, we have support from the county and from uh, Environmental Health Coalition and from you know, all facets of, of operations in San Diego. So um, we're proud that we're, we, we're well on our way to converting our fleet. Next slide. Um, it requires a lot of work. You know, We have these charging stations. We've got six of them at our operating division downtown. We're adding two more at each of our operating divisions in South Bay, El Cajon and Curry Mesa. And you know, one of the, the, the biggest challenges is to get enough power uh, required to, to power all. We've got about 600 buses that we will need to, to power one day by, by electricity. So we're working with SDG&E to ensure that, that we have the adequate power source. Next slide. We've done a pilot. Um, electric buses uh, are not cheap. They're about a million dollars a piece and that's almost double the cost of a CNG bus. Um, we've done those 12 charging stations as part of our pilot. Um, the results have been really, really good. I mean, we expected uh, a range of about 150 miles from the buses and they're really operating uh, nicely. The re reliability is equal to a CNG bus. So the maintenance is, is good. Um, the fuel cost is one of our concerns. It's, you know, it's, it's considerably higher than what we're paying for, for uh, CNG now, but there are ways that we can, um, uh, get take advantage of lower rates um, when we get all of our buses online. Next slide. We also did a public workshop just like we're doing now. We had a, a Zoom call with about 170 people on it. Um, these were people clearly with an interest in converting our fleet to all electric. Um, uh, the, participate, the participants overwhelmingly wanted MTS to prioritize uh, our ZEB rollout to disadvantaged communities. Um, they didn't want to sacrifice current service levels to pay for it. And, and several slides later, I'll show you kind of the, the incremental costs. We're going to have to find a lot of money to make this, make this happen. 
Um, and again, you know, 2040 is 20 years away, and that's kind of a blink of an eye, uh, but still people want us to, to make it happen as fast as possible. So we're gonna be reviewing our transition plan on a yearly basis to see if we can accelerate that and, and beat the deadline of 2040. Next slide. Um, you know, this is a lot, a lot of information. I know I'll go through these fairly quickly. This is our all of our bus routes. Um, uh, those in the purple hatch mark, those are disadvantaged communities as defined by um, uh, California. Um, a lot of our routes do touch those and we're gonna prioritize our ZEB uh, buses into those communities. Next slide. And these are our four operating divisions and, and the middle one is uh, our South Bay division. That's the division where um, uh, a lot of the routes do touch uh, a DAC community, disadvantaged communities. And so we're gonna prioritize the development of the infrastructure at our South Bay uh, division. Next slide. So it's, a, it's gonna be a big endeavor. Um, you know, uh, a plug-in requires a lot of real estate, real estate that we don't have. And so we're gonna employ these, uh, deploy these overhead gantry systems. This is um, a system in Europe, but this allows us to charge a lot of vehicles all at once. Um, all of our real estate now for our buses, they, at night the buses are parked, you know, tail to tail and, and um, uh, side view mirror to side view mirror. There's hardly any space to, to, to walk between them. So that's the kind of environment we, we need to, um, figure out how we can charge all of these vehicles overnight. And so that will, that will um, allow us to get some super off-peak and off-peak overnight charging rates, and hopefully that will bring down our fuel costs. Next slide. Just wanna point out, you know, we, we, this kind of illustrates the, um, the impact we've already made, the positive impact we've already made. This is a chart similar to the one that you saw in the previous um, uh, presentation. But the circles there represent the um, GHGs that is attributed to MTS vehicles. So it's relatively small today, um, but as you can see by 2040, that's gonna be almost nothing. We do have some small buses that will be operating on propane beyond the 2040, but those are outside of the CARB mandate. So, um, but we're gonna work, you know, as technology, the whole, the whole thought process behind this is that battery life will um, um, be improved. Uh, the technology will become more affordable. Um, and so uh, we're looking to even take those smaller vehicles and convert them to um, zero emissions by 2040 as well. Next slide. Um, again, a lot of information getting into the weeds here, um, but this, this shows kind of the pathway of, of how we're going to convert our fleet from C and G, which is in that, um, that tan color, um, that's going to diminish. The last C and G bus we will ever buy is going to be in 2028. So that's only eight years away. They generally have a lifespan of 12 years. So um, as you can see by 2040, um, we're going to be almost all zero emissions. Next slide. A lot of numbers here. That middle column, as you go down to the bottom, you see $42 million. That's, that's the delta between what it would cost to buy CNG buses versus um, uh, zero electric buses. So 42 million additional dollars, 42 million additional dollars we need to find every year between now and 2040. And so, you know, there's, there's lots of grants out there. There's lots of ways we can fund it, but it's gonna require a, a, a lot of work to, to get that done. Um, next slide. Oh, and that's it. We're going to bring out our Zebs. We're on uh, Clean Air Day. We are going to have them at Old Town and at our Iris uh, station um, down on the, the blue line. So people can kind of get up close and check them out, see our electric green buses. So these things are, they're just really cool too. They're, they're absolutely quiet. You know, there's no tailpipe on them. So we got no emissions. And they're just a pleasure to, to, to ride in. So again, thank you for having me and I'm open to questions later. Thanks. That was awesome, Rob. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see those buses on the road and cleaning up the air. And it's really, really exciting. Um, I'm gonna pass it off to Robert Kaylee from uh, North County Transit District. And he's gonna tell us about their program with the electric buses. 
Robert there? Here he comes. You're on mute, Rob. Robert. I thought you all were. There we go. We're, we hear you loud and clearly. Okay, you're uh, on you. Good. Well, once again, thank you for having us as, as part of your program today. It's a pleasure to be here on behalf of the North County Transit District. My name is Robert Kalix, and I'm the Chief of Planning, Strategy, and Innovation. And it's a pleasure to be part of all this. If we can go on to the next slide, as you all heard, MTS, uh, together with NCTD, together with SANDAC, we're all working together to make our air cleaner. And San Diego County is actually, you know, even though we may have our challenges, I think San Diego County is doing a, a much better job than others in terms of, of providing cleaner air for its population. And we at NCTD are very proud to be contributing to that. Um, right now we're at 150 bus, uh, buses in terms of a fleet. Uh, we provide a, about 6.4 million rides each year. We have a 30 uh, fixed route bus fleet in terms of the service area that we provide close to a thousand uh, square miles. And right now we have 143 CNG buses. And even though we're only at nine diesel buses, our goal is to eventually uh, go to complete uh, uh, zero emissions by 2040, just like MTS. And right now our average age is only about 11 years old. And right now we have about 57 buses uh, coming to replace uh, some of our CNG fleet and our delivery begins this month. And if we go on to the uh, next slide, we are advancing plans to implement uh, zero emission bus technology. In December of 2018, as you can see here, uh, CARB adopted the Innovative Clean Transit, Transit Regulation, and it requires all of us transit agencies to be with zero emission buses by 2040. So if we can go on to the next slide, give you an idea of what we're coming up with here at NCTD. Um, we incl we're including in our implementation of battery electric buses as well as hydrogen fuel cell electric buses. Both types present an opportunity to reduce pollution and reduce oil dependency, and of course make our air much cleaner. And, and as MTS talked about, how it's going to reduce carbon emissions by upwards of about 270,000 pounds per year compared to diesel and CNG buses. Let's go on to the next slide, please. We began the process of developing a rollout plan in February of 2019. And our plan is to have it entirely by 2040. Um, we started in September 20th, a rollout plan was approved by CARB for implementation. So this pilot program, if we go on to the next slide, our goal is to uh, procure six battery electric buses arriving next fiscal year, and then eight fuel cell electric buses in the following year. Our pilot program will determine which bus type would best meet our NCT requirements, NCTD's requirement uh, to move forward with our uh, rollout plan. Let's go on to the next slide, please. As, uh, as Rob mentioned, it's a very expensive program. Uh, each, of, each of these buses are close to a million, if not more. Um, and our pilot program would be looking at uh, costing for facilities about $8.1 million. Let's go on to the next slide, please. Our transition will require a number of modifications and changes to our existing infrastructure and operations. And as you can see here, the general layout of our division charging infrastructure um, is similar to what Rob is showing that others need to do. And then we'll also have this charge point express stations for battery electric buses, as you can see there to the right, and our fueling stations for hydrogen fuel cell electric buses, to give you an idea, are right there below uh, to the right of our slide. Let's go on to the next one, please. The benefits, of course, is cleaner air. And by doing this, um, it would also help where we're providing a lot of service to low-income communities. Um, and our, we're proud to say that a lot of those areas are gonna be benefiting um, from these buses, uh, especially this pilot project, uh, running along uh, these communities that will uh, benefit from that. So if we can go on to the next slide, please. And this is just to show in our service area where uh, low-income communities are in terms of, you can see Route 303, Route 302, and 309, and 101, and 350 um, specifically is uh, benefiting those areas that are considered low-income communities. And uh, if we go on to the next slide. Further benefits is that we'll be primarily focused on the Greece route, starting with a pilot project, Route 350, which operates in Escondido. 
in hydrogen fuel cell electric bus pilot in the West Division, where we primarily focus on our routes 101, 302, 303, which, uh, as, you can, as you saw on the slide earlier, um, it serves the coastal cities and, of course, the distance. Let's go on to the next slide, please. Oh, if you want to find out more, we, uh, of course, have it all on our webpage and our schedules and services. You can go to gonctd.com. And if you want to provide any comments to what we're uh, doing here at NCTD, you can go to Go NCTD Contact for a comment page. And with that, I wanted to speed it up a little bit so we can get to the questions and answers a little sooner. And thank you very much for allowing us uh, the opportunity to share what we're doing to uh, contribute to cleaner air here in the San Diego County area. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Robert. It's very exciting. I, I love listen, uh, looking at your charging stations and the infrastructure as well as the buses. So thank you so much. Um, now let's do one last poll to see um, how much carbon dioxide is released every 10 minutes by a gas-fired uh, vehicle. So um, let us know what, uh, what you think. For every 10 minutes spent idling, one pound of carbon dioxide is released by gas powered vehicles, true or false? So answer this quick poll. Okay. All right, so let's see what the answer is. Okay, that, so you guys have answered true. Um, and that is the correct answer. So thank you so much for participating in that. Um, I want to move on to uh, some information just to quickly about uh, what iCommute is doing. We have a Clean Air Day corporate challenge this year. And for those of you that have participated in the iCommute program in the past, we did used to have a regular corporate challenge for Rideshare Week. Um, and also for Bike to Work Day. And those have been shelved for um, uh, several years, but with the opportunity to link up with Clean Air Day, um, we added in a little corporate challenge. It's based on pledges. And so um, participating employers uh, with the highest number of employee pledges um, by their size category uh, get recognition on our leaderboard. Um, and also in these four different ways. So we're putting out an ad in the San Diego Business Journal so your company will be listed there. Um, we're uh, putting out several posts on our social media channels, something on our iCommute website and in our iCommute monthly newsletter. So it's a way to kind of spread the word. And this is just a sample of the, um, the leaderboard that we have on our webpage. These were the pledges as of uh, the 23rd of September. So that was last week. Um, we should have the new ones out um, to put up there for today. And um, that's the, those are the size categories there. So uh, micro all the way to meg, uh, mega size companies, you can compete in your size category. So there you go. And then we also have for individuals, a social media contest. Um, so keep an eye out on the iCommute Facebook page for the contest details. And that's where uh, commuters can share a picture, a photo, um, or pledge story about how they will participate in Clean Air Day. And you have a chance of winning a $500 gift card at Cal Coast Bikes, which is over on Adams in North Park. Um, so enter to win anytime between October 5th through the 9th, just by adding a photo and a comment on that iCommute Facebook page and uh, share it with us and to enter the contest. So we're super excited about that contest and hope that you get involved. Uh, next slide, just a couple of words about our regional plan, which is uh, something really important to our agency, SANDAG. Um, so how does Clean Air Day and alternative commuting tie to the work that SANDAG is doing? Well, every four years, SANDAG prepares and updates a regional plan in uh, collaboration with its 18 member cities and the county. Um, and our vision for the 2021 regional plan imagines a regional transportation system that is faster, that is fairer, that is cleaner, and faster by reducing uh, traffic congestion, fairer by increasing social equity, and cleaner by meeting the state's and the federal uh, em um, environmental mandates. Next slide. 
So through these mandates, we're required to adopt a plan that reduces greenhouse gas emissions and vehicle miles traveled um, for those driving alone. So to do this, we need more travel options in our region that connect people with where they need to go. Uh, the vision for Sandiag uh, incorporates a holistic planning strategy to make door-to-door -door connections, offer faster transit with expanded service, and deploy flexible fleets such as rideshare and micromobility to provide compelling options to get around. So that way you won't have to rely on your car. The 2021 regional plan will also consider policies and new programs to focus growth and development near transit improving safety for biking and walking, increasing the use of zero emission vehicles, advance climate resiliency, and facilitate systems operations through our region. So it's a very comprehensive plan. You can learn more about our 2021 regional plan and subscribe for updates by visiting the sdforward.com website. And we'll put that uh, website in the chat so that you can click through to that. Um, okay, so it looks like we have a few minutes left to take some questions and answers. Um, I would uh, like to um, also just say quickly that uh, you can reduce your congestion by um, uh, using any of the ones of the modes that we have here listed. These are uh, commute options that we have on our web page. Of course, telework, everybody's doing that, but there are some tips and tricks on our um, webpage now for employers and for employees uh, biking uh, to work or to the shops. We have a regional bike plan, uh, sorry, bike map on our webpage. We have tips for walking, uh, walking to work, walking to run errands, uh, carpool. We have a partnership with Waze Carpool. Um, so it's an easy way to find a carpool ride match with somebody else traveling your way. Um, we have a Vanpool program with a $400 subsidy, more information on that, including some um, new promotions that increase that, promo that subsidy to up to uh, $999. And then we have uh, options to take transit. So more information on our webpage. Um, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Rachel Forseth, who is an iCommute account executive and consultant to Sandag. She's here to help moderate our uh, questions, um, any questions that we're receiving. So off to you, Rachel. Great. Hi, everyone. And thanks to our awesome panelists. Um, first question, we'll just jump into it. And at the bottom of the screen is where you can enter them. How can we enter to win the $500 by gift card? That's a great question. Um, starting October 5th, our iCommute Facebook page will share posts about the sweepstakes. So you simply comment on that post, keep an eye on our, on our Facebook page, and share your Clean Air Day pledge story for a chance to win. So you must comment between October 5th and October 9th, and then you'll be automatically entered to win. Next question is for Rob or Robert. I'm interested in riding an electric bus on Clean Air Day. Is there a schedule I can view to see the routes? So the, this is Rob at MTS. I, I cheated and I saw that question earlier and I went to our website because we do, we do post the schedule for our ZEBS, but I'm afraid that list was woefully out of date. So we're gonna fix that. Um, but if you go to our, our, our uh, homepage, uh, sdmts.com, we have a big banner uh, celebrating our, our ZEB transition plan. You just click on that and you'll go to a page where there is a link to, to the schedule. And I'll, I'll get an up-to-date schedule up there as quickly as possible. Great, thank you. And how about uh, with NCTD, Robert? Well, again, our buses will begin arriving soon. We don't have one right now that we can uh, put there at clean air day, but we do have the information available. so. Uh, if somebody wants us to send them information, and once we do get them out there, we'll make sure to let everybody know, just like MTS is doing, so that they can uh, and ride beautiful buses that they have as well. As far as the schedules for NCTD, just online check out route map, or is there somewhere specific folks can look for an up-to-date kind of? Um, um, there, there is a section in there. I just, I'm not sure exactly what it's called. But um, we have different tabs there if you want to find out information about uh, our electric buses there. And um, if there's an email that somebody wants me to send them, uh, we can go ahead and do that as well. Excellent. 
Next question. I'm unsure if my employer has taken the clean air day pledge. How can I check it? Um, as an organization, you go to cleanair.org and look at the organizational, organizational portal and you can search by your company's name. So that's a great uh, call to action for everyone on this webinar. Make sure your company has in fact pledged and you need to have at least one person individually pledging to show up on that list. Uh, Rachel, let me just, if I can just add to that. So uh, uh, when your company should have actually sent you a link that they've selected. Uh, so um, you should have gotten that. And that is how you will, it's mirrors the it's same exact everything on the page. Uh, it's just act, acts as a counter. So if you didn't get that from your employer, if they are listed, uh, make sure to ask for that. Excellent. And in that same vein, um, I can use created an employer toolkit that contains a wide range of resources such as flyers, sample emails, FAQs that can be customized and shared across your organization. Uh, so just check out our website, icommutesd.com slash clean air day. And of course you'll get a follow-up email from us with that. Um, another question about the, the zero emission buses. I'm impressed with the plans for zero emission buses. I heard recently that North County Transit is getting new locomotives on the coaster. Will those be lower emissions as well? Uh, because they're newer, uh, they're much more efficient than the older vehicles and uh, locomotives that we have. And um, they're going to be put into service soon. Uh, we got them into service during the summer um, in terms of receiving them. And uh, we're going to be doing a special press event uh, later on to be able to uh, show it off to the public and start using them. So we're very excited that we have new locomotives. And because they're newer, um, how they run, how they operate is much more efficient than the older ones that we have. Yeah, and wow. I, I'd just like to add real quick, Rachel. Sorry, we um, we're we're very happy that NCTD um, is doing that with the with the coasters. We helped them um, with a grant a couple of years ago to um, get those coaster trains um, done, yeah. and so we we're very happy with with it, with it coming to fruition. And they're going to be some of the cleanest trains operating um, in California or really the nation. So we're really happy to see it. Yeah, it was it was a big lift, and it takes a village larger community to come together to help us do that. We're very grateful that we, we have that kind of collaboration uh, throughout the county. And we're just really excited that we're bringing them on board. Amazing, yeah, the, the future is here. Um, yeah, that's right. Next question, can I take an electric bike on the bus? Well, our buses have racks. And I'm sure MTS can, uh, I don't want to speak for them, but I guess most buses, if not all buses have a rack that we can put the, uh, the bike on. Uh, bringing them on board, I don't think that we permit that, but we can definitely have racks there for people to put their bikes on. Right. M yeah, MTS has uh, bike racks on all of its buses, and um, you can bring an electric bike aboard a trolley as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it doesn't matter if it's electric, regular, uh, it all bikes will No, uh, it doesn't matter. The, the bike racks might be tricky. I mean, some of those electric bikes have really fat tires, and mm -hmm. so those probably won't fit into them. They have to be, you know, you know, standard like mountain bike tires is, will fit. That's, that would be my only worry if I had those big fat tires. Okay. Yeah. So keep that in mind, those of you with big mountain bikes. Um, that's it for our questions, and we've got a whole minute left, so I'm going to hand it back over to Deborah to wrap us up, and, and thanks again um, to everyone who is attending. It's great to see familiar names out there. Um, we appreciate you guys. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, panelists, for uh, all the stellar presentations, the Q&A. Um, the offers for uh, additional information for everybody who did attend. Um, we did have our com uh, contact information. If we can just have the next slide, there it is. So I'll, everyone that's been on the panelists today, on the panel today as panelists, um, their email addresses are there. And so please feel free to reach out and get your further questions answered. If you have any questions about a contest, um, about your employer showing up on our leaderboard, um, even questions about how you can do um, the all you can do to clean up the air, then get in touch with us or with Brian. So we really appreciate your time today. And thank you very much for tuning in. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, you guys.